spoke something to me that has forever changed my thinking. This is his view. He said, there is something about it when people who know how to use their faith come together to pray. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Thursday pre-service prayer. I can see the numbers are just a little less than they were. Everybody starts, comes out of the shoot on Monday like, woo! And then by Thursday, like, whoa. <laughs> but not you, right? Not you. Not you. Not you. And everybody else will be here. Just give them another few minutes. But hey, you're here. You're watching from the top of the world to the bottom and say it all the way around the middle. And we're so glad that you're here, Victory Channel, however you are watching. We don't know. You could be watching on all sorts of all sorts of outlets because we're trying to get on all of them. The Lord said to my dad back in 1976, I believe it was, he said, I want this. I am coming so soon. I want this uncompromised message of faith on every available voice. And so we are plugging away at that just as fast as we can. And we appreciate your help and your support as we do that because Jesus said he is coming. He is coming. He is coming. I want to talk to you some, a little further tonight about some of the things we have alluded to. We've kind of hinted at. We're talking about utterance and faith and, and praying for utterance for ministers. But what is at the root of that? Let's open our Bibles again to Ephesians chapter 1, which has been our go-to scripture for the most part. Ephesians chapter 1, we've talked about how God has made known this great mystery, this great plan of His for all people of all time, for all of creation. And in that mystery, it says in verse 9, it's this, and that He planned for the maturity of the times, the climax of the ages, to unify, unify and head all things up and consummate them in Christ under his leadership, things in heaven and things in earth. And you can look around at the times and say, well, if that's his plan, it doesn't seem to be working. Doesn't seem to be working. Things look more divided, more dis discourse. And uh, I don't know if we'll have time this week to talk about some things about unity and what Jesus said about it and what he said he is and he isn't. But we won't go down that path right now. Stay focused, Terry. Stay focused, focus, focus, focus. Okay. But if we look over at verse 15, which is just a few verses down now, he talks about the Holy Spirit. Then in verse 15, and he said, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for the saints, faith and love, faith and love. You find those two paired together throughout the scripture, especially in Ephesians, faith and love. I pray to, uh, I don't cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayer because I pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. I love the Amplified Bible that makes this so clear, of insight into mysteries and secrets. Well, just over here in verse nine, we had seen he wants to make known that mystery to us. He's actually, in other words, he has said the mystery of this plan and my great plan for you, for your family, your church, your community, your city, nation, and for the world, for the nations, for the Jews, all my plan, all of that, I have given the thumbs up for you to know and have and operate in that plan. He said you can have it. But there's another step to that. And Paul said, I'm praying that he would give you the spirit of revelation and wisdom so that you would understand, you'd have insight into that mystery and the knowledge that the Passion Translation says uh, by the deepening, your deepening intimacy with him. So there's a place of insight into him that, that causes you have, to have a greater intimacy with him, but greater intimacy with him produces wisdom and insight into the mysteries and secrets that are hidden in him. I think that's exciting. So then in verse 18, he says, and this is how, by having the eyes uh, of your heart, uh, King James says, the eyes of your understanding, I like that, flooded with light 
for three things so that you can know three things. You can know the hope to which he has called you or the, the hope that's in your calling, another version says. How rich is his inheritance in the saints? And number three, so that you can know and understand the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of his power as it was demonstrated when he raised Christ from the dead. He wants you to understand that power this, in the same way that he demonstrated it. Wow. Wow. None of us have yet facilitated the revelation and insight into walking in that power at the level that God used when he raised Christ from the dead. But he said, he's, he said, it's out there, but it's laid hold of by prayer. Then of course, as we've said all week in chapter six, we see Paul said, now pray for me that I can bring forth by the utterance of God, the revelation of that mystery. So it's twofold. You have to have your eyes enlightened, flooded with light. And the minister has to have light on the inside, which gives him words with which to express that revelation. But a lot of people read this verse and they say, well, you know, flooded with light. And there's an automatic thing in English that, that says that's a metaphor. Okay, light, darkness, good, evil. You see that running throughout our culture. You see it running through other religious ideas, doctrines, Star Wars, this is light versus evil, or darkness, and then the lightsabers, and you know, all that. <laughs> so uh, all that, but, but that, I wonder now, is, is this really just a metaphor that the scripture is using here? Well, I was thinking about another place where the Bible talks about light, and it says in Acts 9, that Paul was drawing his breath hard from threatening and murderous desire. He was, Bill, he had murder in his heart. Murder in his heart. And it, he went to the high priest, requested of him letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he could find any men or women that belonged to the way, that was the name of the group, that's what they called the people who believed that Jesus was the way. And so that he could bind them in chains, take them to Jerusalem, many of them to their death. As he traveled on, he came to Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven flashed round about him. This was not Jesse's LED flashlight. <laughs> this was a light so bright that it was flashing all around him. Okay. And then it says he fell to the ground. And he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you're persecuting, and it's very dangerous and going to turn out badly for you if you keep kicking against the goad and trembling and astonished. He said, Lord, what do you desire me to do? And the Lord said to him, arise and go into the city. We know from other reports of this testimony that in that time, the Lord showed him all the things that he must do and what he must suffer. So in this moment, I want to ask you, was it a metaphor from heaven that knocked him off his horse, revealed to him who he was talking to, called him Lord, yielded his life and showed him all the plan of his life and allowed him to make a decision, yes or no? I mean, was that a metaphor? That's some metaphor. No, it was light. It was actual light from heaven. 1 John 1, 5 says, God is light. But let me reverse that for you because the other side of that is true too. And that is that light is God. Light is God. God is light. The Bible says there's no darkness in him. So he must be totally light. If there was any light outside of him, then that light would be greater than him because it could exist apart from him. But that's not the case. So light is God, but God is light and there's no darkness in him. So let's think a minute now. Just, just travel this road with me for a little bit. Uh, if you don't like this road, well, hang on, humor me. Give me, give me a minute here. 
Genesis chapter one, in the beginning, God. I mean, that, you can stop right there and go home. That says it all. In the beginning, God. And what, what was it about God? The first record that we have, God, Spirit of God was moving, waiting, but God said, let there be light. The Hebrew Bible, one translation says, into English says, light be. Light be. Science says that light is the foundation of all things. No, no matter how far down they go and how they can get into an atom or molecules of an atom, anything, any part of it, it, they still find light. Light is the foundation of every living thing. We already know that. God is light. Light, light is the life. But, but um, there was no sun. There were no stars that came later. So what was this light? Did God create light? Did he call for light out from somewhere? Did, we, did he speak and then there was a light thing out there that started out there? No, I propose to you that, that this was not a creation. That light was not a creation, but a release. Let me say it to you this way. Light be and he was. Light be, and he was. Now God was already there, so what was the difference? If he was God already be, why would he say light be, and he was? What happened? He revealed himself. He made himself perceptible and tangible. Before that, he was clothed in darkness or there was no revelation of him. But when he said light be, he opened himself up and the very foundation of God himself came out. He was revealed light be and he was. In other words, light be from in here out there. So he released himself, but the release of himself was revelation. He revealed himself in a perceptible, tangible way for every, it was the building block upon which every other aspect of creation was then layered. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. So light is the foundation of all creation because God is light. So he's the foundation of all things. It had to be that way. God had to be the foundation of all things of creation. And without that light and without a revelation being, without light being revealed or released from the inside to the outside of him, no other creation could have commenced. Now, John chapter one, verse four says the light, that life is the light of men. So God is light. God is love. God and his word are one. Uh, word are one. The entrance of his word brings so his word that he spoke is a also what we see is a means of getting that revealed light to you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. So this light is the light, this life is the light of men. John 1, 4. Light is more spiritual than it is natural. Actually, it is spiritual Light is spiritual, but it has a natural, a natural counterpart. It has a nat let me say it this way. It has a, na a natural expression. Light is spiritual, but it has a natural expression. We see that in the natural creation around us. We see that with our natural, with our natural eyes. Spiritual light, listen, spiritual light is the revealing of God in any of his aspects, qualities, character, his ways, or his kingdom. It's the revealing of God, anything about God or his kingdom, to our spirits. Light, spiritual light is revelation of God. It's spiritual because it reveals spiritual. 
It's light to our spirits and then to our understanding. That light comes out, comes to us by His Word and by His Spirit. The Word apart from the Spirit doesn't, it, it won't, you can read the Word, but if you, if you try to separate God's Word from Him, there's no spirit life in it. And it's a book, it's, it's history, it's, it's knowledge, it's formality, it's rules, it's laws. But if you read the book and you're looking to know something about, just, I just want to know, if you even just want to know if God is in there. The Spirit of God is on it and light starts to come out of the letters. Uh, one Jewish rabbi said, the ink is not anointed, but the letters are. The ink is not anointed, but the letters are. The words are. There's life in these pages. Hallelujah. So this light, you go to the Word and this light by the Spirit shines to us. Spiritual light is revelation knowledge. I like that phrase. Or spiritual or revealed knowledge. It's knowledge that God has revealed. You can't really discover God. Jesus said, ask. He said, seek. He said, knock. But you're asking and seeking and knocking is not what, you, it's not a hide and seek game that you, you, you think you can go find him. But it's your asking and seeking that qualifies you for him to reveal himself to you. If you're not looking and you're not asking and you don't want to know, He's not obligated to reveal. And that's not just to know him in a first encounter, but the rest of eternity, that's the process. If we don't ask, we don't receive. If we don't seek, we won't find. If we don't knock, then it won't be open. And Jesus said in the Greek, it says, keep on knocking. Not because he won't answer, if, unless you just keep knocking and knocking and knocking, but it's because there are so many doors to open. When you knock, that one's open. Go to the next one and knock again. Go to another one and knock again. Seek some more. Ask some more. Don't let there be any end to what you're asking for and what you want to know of Him and His ways. Now, Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Wow, Peter! The blessing is working on you. You are blessed because flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. My Father has revealed. My Father has enlightened you. My Father has revealed Himself and His Christ to you. And then Jesus said, upon this rock, not the rock of Peter, Peter, I mean, Peter messed up so bad. Aren't you glad the church isn't built on Peter? He, he, well, we love Peter, but come on, you know. There is a foundation that Peter played in it because he was one of those 12 apostles, but highly important role. But the rock that Jesus built his church upon was not upon Peter, but, but on a much bigger rock. It's a different word. And that bigger rock is the rock that the foundation Dad calls it the rock of revealed knowledge. The rock of revealed knowledge. The church, you are in the church not because you walked down the aisle, not because you were sprinkled when you were a baby, not because your parents were, not because you marked Christian on, your, on, your, uh, on the last religious question survey you got. Not, not for any reason other than there was a revelation of light that struck your spirit that said, Jesus is the Son of God, and I need to make Him Lord and Savior. The same as what happened with Paul that knocked him off his horse. And unless you let the light of God knock you off your high horse, then you're going to fall short as well. So that light of revealed knowledge, Jesus said the church will be built on it. Not just set on it, 
but it will be built. It will be built in number, but it will also be built. He said, my house will be built upon a rock. That building, the household of faith, the family of God, we're, bu- we're building that house. We each have a, a, a personal part of that house that we are building and talking about digging deep into that rock, looking and pressing for that revealed knowledge of God, revealed knowledge of his kingdom, revealed knowledge of that plan. Praise the Lord. But this light, just like light's natural expression is the foundation of all natural things. The light of revealed knowledge is the foundation of the new creation. Light, the natural light is the foundation of natural creation. Spiritual light and revelation is the foundation of the new creation to be born again. But what is the problem? John 3, 19. This is the basis, Jesus said. This is the basis of all judgment for all men. Think about it. Light has come, but men love the darkness more than the light. That's the judgment for all men. That they loved darkness more than light for their deeds were evil. They loved, they loved their evil deed more than they did the light. Judgment is not only for heaven and hell, but there will be the judgment seat of Christ. We have a judgment to stand before him. It's not a judgment of heaven and hell, thank God, but it is a judgment of what did you do with what I gave you? What did you do with me? What did you do with the revelation of me that I gave you? Did you walk as children of the light? Did you walk as children uh, uh, as, uh, with the armor of light? Were you light in a dark place? Were you the light, the city set upon the hill? Were you that light? And did you seek to cause your light to be brighter by knowing him more and more and more? We have to love the light, loving the light. Now that's a great, you think sometimes I came in here to pray and we've been here preaching all day, but, but I, I believe that these things equip us to have a place in him and to on purpose pray. When you go, you go home, if you'll, if you will review these things, Ponder them, meditate them, along with the word that you've heard of instruction throughout the day. You can be more effective in the kingdom in your prayer and in your walk in relationship with him. You can be effective for the kingdom in that fellowship time as well as the time that you have walking with people. Am I making sense? Let's stand. Six of you got it. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to remind those of you that are watching tonight, 877-281-6297. Two things. Call if you have a testimony because there'll be people being healed and receiving all through the night. Maybe you already have during this week. We've heard testimonies. Call. Call in and tell us. But if you have something you think, I I need somebody to pray for me right now, that's the number. It's on your screen. Call that number and somebody with faith who has revealed knowledge working in their life will pray a prayer that will cause that light to strike your spirit, enlighten your mind. Faith will be ignited. You pray together and God will move. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of, oh, they're here. Praise God. Y'all are so quiet. Wow. I was just wishing for you. And there you are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, I need, I don't know more. I like Mr. Okay. Aubrey, could you come up front, please? 
Ara de de sili ko inish. Just come stand with me today. Kale se roto ongle. Hey, eyes. Ah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You got that. Oshde ananama. Yeah, you got that. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. Then I'm at this stage. Stick it. Stick it. Not you stick it. Yes, okay. 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 Yes, okay.
We got a lot of people coming. Miss Ivan, maybe you should go over there too. Adana Mazasinde. Lord, we praise you. Give your lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. The turning 